All right, as promised, I'm gonna make a video about the timing belt install. Okay, so the first thing to remember is you need to set the engine to top dead center on the compression stroke with all the time marks lined up before you take it apart. This will cause, it. there's lots of ways you can take it apart, but trust me, this is just the easiest way to do it to make sure that there's not gonna be an issue when you go to pull the heads and when the, because on, on one side of the cams, on the passenger side of the engine, those are going to want to clack closed. When it's at top dead center, the passenger side has got some of the valves open, so there's pressure on there. You don't want them to just clack closed, smack against the piston. So make sure it's set at top dead center before you take the engine apart. Uh, it's just one of the most important things I can say. Um, all right, so when reinstalling the timing belt, before you take it apart, the tensioner, which when looking at it, is this right here. That's the tensioner, it's got the three bolt assembly behind it and you can see the hydraulic piston right there self-contained doesn't use oil pressure from the engine all right if you can see right here it's really hard to see there's not a very good light in here I don't have my light with me let me see if I can turn the engine to point towards the light a little better all right right here still don't know if you can see it there's a threaded hole I believe it's six millimeter by 1.0 but I'm not hundred percent I'm pretty sure though just by looking at it you need to slowly, and I mean slowly, insert a bolt in there until it, until it hits the back of this arm here. This little arm that pushes the piston right here on the hydraulic tensioner end. Put the bolt in until it touches that, then slowly turn it. Just maybe a quarter of a turn, wait a minute, a quarter of a turn. Do not get anxious. If you turn this bolt in too much, you'll crack this hydraulic cylinder and have to go get a new hydraulic actuator. And those are like a hundred bucks. Um, or you can just replace it if you want. But anyways, regardless, with the new one or the old one, slowly put that bolt in until this top piece rests against this housing. So then you know the piston is completely depressed, it'll give you the most room to install the timing belt. All right, so after that's done, you need to have that, and it needs to stay like that until you get to go put it back together. I just took the bolt out a minute ago. I put the timing belt on just for the ease of installation, and now I'll explain the process to you. Uh, best way to do it, these cams on the driver's side of the engine, they will stay with all the valves closed, setting perfectly lined up. With the dimple on the backing plate here, it's hard to see, but there's a dimple there, and the timing mark on the cam gear. I painted mine last time I did the timing belt. Um, yours may not be painted, but there is a dimple imprinted into the cam gear, and this is, and this is embossed outwards on the backing plate. The other thing is get a good quality timing belt. Um, Power Enterprises, Nismo, all of them make great belts. Um, this is a Deco. I work at Advanced Auto Parts. This came from Advanced Auto Parts. This is a Deco brand belt. This is a good quality timing belt. Um, it has the marks on the timing belt already made for you, showing you where every timing mark should be and helps you line it up from front to back so that we don't have to eyeball it. Get one. It's got time marks on all of them, including the crank pulley. It has all of them. All right. So anyways, so start with the side that the cam gears you do not have to move. Um, first things first, just put the crank pulley on with the keyway. You can see the keyway goes in here. I just have the bolt in now for turning it. Keyway goes there. Install the crank gear with a splash plate behind it. And line up this dimple right here to this notch. It looks like a dirt spot, but it's a notch made into the oil pump assembly. Line that up first and you'll know you're at top dead center. All right, And the, the number one piston right up here will be fully extended. I did that before I installed the heads, before I installed, installed anything. Um, and then I double checked before I started the time belt because I, I think I may have moved it once or twice. All right. Anyway, so after that's done, you have the hydraulic tensioner installed, you got the heads installed in the backing plate, the upper intake manifold has to be installed, it's got the top idler bolted to it. Um, you're going to want to start here with the, with the driver's side cams, those don't move. Line them up, put the belt on where it's supposed to go, wrap the belt under the idler, come to these two gears. On the top of the cam, there's a one inch, a one inch um, wrench will fit right there. Turn that cam gear until this dot mark 
right here lines up with the backing plate mark. Lay the, the timing belt over the top of it. I use bulldog clips, the little things that hold folders together, and just clip it right here. And then I also clipped it right here. And I knew this one and this one were on, so this whole assembly wasn't going to go sliding around or moving or jumping a tooth. You can use anything. Um, Clothes pins would probably even work. Um, I don't know if they'd hold it tight enough, but they would, I'm sure they would even work just to hold it there. All right, so then you move to the exhaust cam on the same passenger side head. Do the same thing. There's a one-inch key right there. It's just built like a nut onto it. Shaved off to a one-inch wrench will fit over it perfectly. All right? Uh, or 24 millimeters is probably correct, but anyways, a one-inch wrench will fit there. 25 point, or 25 millimeter, I guess. 25.4 millimeters is one inch. All right, so... Then you do the same thing with this pulley. You line the, the cam gear up with the, with the hole in the back plate or with the dimple on the back plate. Lay the time belt over it and make sure when you look at it from the front, that thing lines smooth up. Perfect, I can't get the camera straight, but it, you can look right down the bore built into it and see the line that goes straight to the back. All right, so you know this one, the exhaust cam, the intake cam on this head's good. And then the exhaust cam, or the intake cam and the exhaust cam are good on this head. All right, so then you wrap the belt around the inside of the tensioner and the inside of the idler. Come down to the bottom here. Make sure your pulley's lined up straight. Now, if you've got that tensioner pushed all the way in, then the belt should pretty easily slide onto the spot. And then make sure that the line on the timing belt lines up on top of the dimple mark. Not to the side of it, not next to it, to the top of it. And if you've done that, then regardless of where this mark is, if your time belt's a good quality time belt, which I mean my mark is is dead nuts, right there you can see it, the top of here and the top of up here is marked up. So now you've got the time belt properly installed. At that point you can take the bolt out, you can take it out as fast as you want. I just took, I took it out a minute ago, took the bolt out, the tensioner will push its way out and it'll be fully tensioned. Alright, that's pretty much everything. The whole timing belt's on there. It's lined up. Um, now at this point, if you want to feel better, I haven't done it yet, but no, I'm right. Walk over here, grab my inch and a 16th inch socket, which I know there's a metric equivalent to that. I don't care. Put it on there. Now, once you do this, usually the time marks won't line back up unless you go all the way back around. So you just can turn everything. And if you do it by hand, you shouldn't feel Anything kind of interfere. Now you probably can't see because I'm wiggling the camera around. But I'm able, because spark plugs are out, it's pretty simple to turn the engine all the way around. And we're coming back up to the timing marks. And there. All right. I didn't get it back all the way around. I got one time mark line back up. And that'll probably leave this one off. So you'd have to rotate this thing probably 12 times to get it going all the way back around. Anyways, I rotated the whole thing around multiple times. I know that there's not a valve contact with the piston, so then you're done with the timing belt. I get it. It's a lot harder in the car, but if this will help you at all, I've got it done. All right, uh, I may make another video next on engine break-in possibly. All right, more to come later.